In 2017, General Thomas Cirillo resigned as deputy head of logistics for the SPLA, citing increased ethnic favoritism in the military and abuses by the security forces against the civilians. He went on to form the opposition group known as the National Salvation Front, abbreviated as NAS. We are joined today by NASA spokesperson, Mr. Suba Samuel Manasse, to discuss not only NASA's mission objectives and also shed light on the ongoing conflict between NAS and the government. So join us here on Beyond the Headlines. Thank you, Mr. Suba, for joining us here on Beyond the Headlines. Thank you very much for hosting me here. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. The National Salvation Front has been termed as more of a briefcase opposition group with limited resources in terms of funds, soldiers, and any having any substantive presence, not only within South Sudan, but also within the region itself, as well as internationally. So what is the mission and objectives of the National Salvation Front. And what have you been able to achieve since your uh, formation? The, the mission of National Salvation Front is to restore the unity, dignity, and power to the people of South Sudan, safeguard diversity, and to establish the democratic federal system of governance. And uh, what I'm trying to say is that you can even testify that uh, we have challenges in that country. We have structural challenges, things to do with governance. We have issues of corruption. We have issues of insecurity in that country. The SPLM-led government has failed the people of South Sudan in ensuring that there is peace in that country, in ensuring that there is a rule of law, in ensuring that there is justice and equality, in ensuring that the public funds, which is supposed to be used for the delivery of services to the people of South Sudan, are not there. What is happening in South Sudan is a group of people who are just benefiting from these massive resources as if it is theirs at the expense of the whole people throughout the country. And therefore we as National Salvation Front, we need to put that country, restore that country, the dignity of the people of South Sudan, such that whatever we are talking about, be it government, be it constitutional reform, constitutional making process, be it governance, be it security, rule of law, it is actually owned by the people of South Sudan. So this has been our struggle, this has been our mission, and uh, whatever we're talking about in our political engagement, our diplomatic engagement, this is actually what we're trying to pursue as National Salvation Front. And what has been your presence in terms of not only within South Sudan, but also within the regional countries in Africa, as well as internationally? National Salvation Front has grown very fast uh, in just four years. Uh, we're throughout in, in South Sudan, we're throughout. And of course, our people, our members inside the country will not be able to identify themselves because uh, you know how brutal the regime is. But uh, we have massive support inside the country in all, in all the states. Uh, regionally, of course, <clears throat> uh, uh, you know, remember, uh, you, you remember where the region has been engaging us in the negotiation. The region has been talking to us to, 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 to to appreciate the, the dialogue. And indeed, dialogue is one of our uh, objective of National Salvation Front. So we also heeded to their advice. So when the region is talking uh, is talking to us, engaging us, that also shows that the, 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 the region has recognized National Salvation Front. International, of course, uh, of course, you see uh, the members of international community, we have been engaging them, yeah, UN, uh, even the uh, in inside the country, uh, because uh, we are actors now in the country. And therefore, if you're actors, then definitely that line of communication will always be there. Uh, in terms of our organization capacity, uh, we are almost uh, having offices, uh, diaspora offices in the almost more than uh, 31 countries. So this shows our capacity of mobilization and the massive support uh, that we have. And since your formation, what are some of the things that you've been able to achieve? Uh, the biggest thing that we're able to achieve, we have proof, we have proof to the people of South Sudan 
and uh, to the region and the international community at large that this piece called IRCS is not working, especially when we walked out from Khartoum uh, negotiation. It was not working. We told them that this piece was meant to address the uh, political and economic crisis in Khartoum because Bashir knows that he's going out and therefore he wanted a quick peace in South Sudan that can allow the flow of oil to, to, to the now. But it doesn't have anything to do with having a permanent uh, creation of permanent peace in the South. Uh, people could refute your claim that the peace agreement has failed. Yet, you know, just recently, the parliament was formed. And also, um, you know, the opposition groups that were part of the South Sudan Opposition Alliance, for example, the one that was under uh, Bagasi Joseph Bokosoro, the South Sudan National Movement for Change, was part of the formation of the government. So you are considered as a sidelined group that, has, that does not have any form of significance. When you look at this uh, agreement, uh, it, is, it focuses on power sharing. Uh, it focuses on power sharing, individual given position, ministerial position, uh, parliamentary position, and, and that is it. You are parliament, you, you are a member of parliament without a political wave. You cannot speak to address intertribal conflict in your consistencies. You cannot talk and challenge the government, which is uh, inciting communities. You cannot talk as a member of parliament to oppose the government, which is uh, instigating land grabbing. For instance, in, uh, in Malakal, you as an MP, beat it in National Assembly, beat it in Council of State, you are there, there at the mercy of the executive, at the mercy of the president and his, uh, and, uh, and his cronies. Secondly, when you look at this parliament, SPLM alone is controlling 330, 330 out of 550. So you can see that this is a SPLM dominated government. They will shoot down any proposal that has been put there for reform. It is only to maintain the status quo. So they can talk whatever they want because they're in power, but they honestly, at the end of the day, people will realize it, whether there is peace in the country, people realize it, whether there is a rule of law in the country, people realize it when, when corruption is no longer there in the country, people realize it when there are no unknown man, gunmen in Juba, and, and, and people realize it when there is no domination and perhaps even political elimination within Juba. If those things are not happening, then things are okay. But as it continues now, then there is no way that somebody can justify beyond doubt that there is a peace being implemented in, in the country. Since the inception of the National Salvation Front, um, there has been in internal uh, disputes which resulted in breakaway groups, which led to, for instance, the formation of the Equatorial Non-Alliance Forces led by Moses Yanga Yoana, and then also the Democratic Resistance Movement led by Lako Jada Kwadio. So what are these uh, events that are occurring within National Salvation Front where you have all these disputes taking place and then breakaway groups forming. You see, uh, the SPLM-led government of Salfakir in Juba, uh, they're actually reading from the manuscript of the National, of the National Congress Party, NCP, in Juba, in Khartoum. Every move, every tactics, every strategy that they're doing, they're reading from the political file of the National Congress Party, NCP. So when National Salvation Front was formed, uh, the government, I remember the famous work of uh, Minister of Information, Michael McQueen in Khartoum, after they signed the agreement and moved out, they said the rest of the group are very, very insignificant. That's, that's the word that they, they used. Uh, and we accepted, yes, we are very insignificant, we are very small, uh, uh, but uh, we are small and vibrant because we have ideas, uh, but we don't want to be large and uh, empty, uh, just like SPLM. So what these people uh, did, the strategy of dealing with us, first of all, they initiated uh, military campaigns uh, that were very small, will be wiped out uh, uh, militarily. They tried. Uh, from 2018, they tried. Until now, as I speak to you, uh, the, the military campaign is on. 
uh, but they're failing. The other option uh, that they're using uh, was, of course, uh, sending spies and agents, talking to individual members within National Salvation Front to cause division and split. So the first group that you talked about was a group, of course, which is uh, uh, aimed at uh, destroying uh, the cohesion within National Salvation Front. And uh, they went, just like you remember during the SPLM, how those of Garbino, how those of uh, William Yon, how those of, they have been going and coming back, uh, even the first vice president, uh, we've been going and coming back and the SPLM still remain uh, strong. So those half-hearted individuals, half-hearted individuals are there in any movement. The political history of any uh, re uh, rebellion throughout the revolution in the world is characterized by this kind of, uh, of uh, individual misunderstanding who usually succumb to, to the influence of the government of the regime and they go and off. So uh, we will not stop them, uh, let them go. Uh, we wish they would have uh, contributed also to bring peace because at the end of the day, what we want is genuine peace. How you bring it is, uh, we don't care how you bring it, but at the end of the day, uh, if there is peace which is genuine, which addresses the needs of everybody, uh, we don't see a reason why the National Salvation Front will uh, uh, struggle. In 2017, among his initial statements upon his resignation as the Deputy Head of Logistics for the SPLA, General Thomas Real stated the following, President Kier and his Dinka leadership clique have tactically and systematically transformed the SPLA into a partisan and tribal army. To arising their opponents, real or perceived, has become a preoccupation of the government. But you have been accused by the government of participating in tribal warfare that has resulted in the killing of non equatorians Therefore, isn't the National Salvation Front itself a terrorist group? There is a, a point here that I want to clarify. Uh, we are hearing a lot of, uh, of uh, assertions or claims by many people that uh, National Salvation Front uh, is, was involved in uh, killing of uh, non equatorians uh, I think this, this, this statement is not true uh, because if we are talking about, uh, for instance, the incident that happened in, uh, in 2016, I remember 2016, when we were even still in Juba, uh, where there was a, a trailer coming from Ye and was attacked somewhere in uh, almost in Bungu. Uh, that incident was actually happened when the National Salvation Front was not even formed. I think that was the SPLM Iowa at that time. And uh, even when you hear of uh, names like uh, MTN, some communities are referred to as an MTN and what, uh, these are all things that happened before National Salvation Front. So National Salvation Front was formed in 2017 in March. And I remember in 2018, there are no incidents of this nature. Uh, in 2019 and until today, there are no incidents of this nature. So we cannot uh, let people not uh, mix us up with what happened during the time of uh, SPLMIO. SPLMIO is a different entity and us, we are a different entity. To go to the other question, uh, whether uh, on, on particularly those aspects that appeared in the, in the resignation letter of uh, General Thomas, yes, those, things, those, those, are, those are real assessments of the situation in the ground. Uh, Salvakir uh, has been, uh, of course, practicing tribalism. That, that is undeniable. He's practicing tribalism. And I think that has been properly uh, supported by the ideology of this famous, famous uh, council, which is the Council of Elders. Uh, we believe that tribe is not a problem in South Sudan. Tribe constitute this great republic called South Sudan. But what is the problem is tribalism. When we begin to use your tribe to achieve a political ends, this is where the problem, the problem comes in. But the, the tribe as a person, as a person or a community 
he doesn't have a problem. He has a culture to protect. He has a means to survive, to survive, and he has a right as a citizen of that country to do whatever he wants, as long as we, it falls within the dictates of the law or the constitution. But the moment some group of people from a particular tribe rises above and uses the tribe to achieve the end, the political end of the whole country, this is where the problem is. So for us, we are against tribalism. The National Salvation Front has been blamed by both the national and state government for the killing of Ugandan traders along the Nimule Juba Road, as well as the Juba Kaya Aye Road. And according to your recent press release from the National Salvation Front, you refuted the condemnation against the National Salvation Front issued by Paulino Lokudu Obode, the State Minister of Information of the government of Central Equatoria State, who alleged that the National Salvation Front is involved in the attacks along the roads. If it is not the National Salvation Front involved in committing the violations, then who is taking part and who is working behind the scenes in committing these violations and killings? And also, as signatories to the cessation of hostilities agreement that was signed in 2017, Aren't you also involved in violating the agreement if you are involved in the attacks along the roads? You see, the, the, the government in Juba, uh, as well as the state government, under Emmanuel Adil, is very confused. Uh, they don't know what they are doing. And they have a right to be confused uh, because they found themselves in those positions, but they don't know. Uh, what they're supposed to deliver, what, what they're supposed to do to the people of South Sudan. Uh, the first one is, of course, uh, the primary responsibility of any government is to ensure security, law and order to the citizens. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is the government who plays on the cards on the insecurity for them to survive throughout. So uh, the state government finds it uh, very difficult now to, to do that because uh, if the bigger government wants insecurity, then you, the small government, what will you do at this time? Either you become part of this uh, insecurity sort of uh, uh, objectives that the government is uh, is pursuing. In regards to these attacks on the, on the, on the highways, uh, there are multiple armed groups that are operating in Central Equatoria at the moment. Let me tell you this. Uh, and the worst enemy currently is SS SSPDF. Why? Because these are people who are almost going now for almost eight months without being paid. And these are people who have been brought from uh, Bahagazal to come and work here, who doesn't have relatives and not given money. Now, where do you expect these people to feed themselves? Well, do you expect these people to feed themselves? These people, of course, will feed themselves on the citizens. They will feed themselves on the motorists that are moving on the high roads. Four days ago, an incident happened outside Ye, where four civilians were killed. The administration in Ye went on air very fast and accused us that we are, our forces are responsible for, for, for doing that. But when we went down and investigated what is it, we found out it is the force of the SSPDF, which are in a place called Mugo, who did that particular uh, incident. You see that? So all, and there are many examples that, are, that have been going on throughout uh, South Sudan. As recently as March, the United Nations um, put out a statement relating to NAS being involved in hostilities with the SSPDF. And also we know that um, your organization is also involved in digging up gold mining within the Eastern Equatoria state and also causing the displacement of the civilians in Ye through attacks and through looting. What do you say to that? Uh, what I know is that, uh, <clears throat> yes, the SSPDF, as I alluded to in the first 
that uh, one of the strategy is to eliminate us militarily. Uh, this is actually their short term, uh, actually their long term uh, uh, strategy is to wipe us out militarily. But the short term plan is to have a negotiation with us because we know this negotiation that we've been doing, they're doing it having in the back of mind that they are, at the end of the day, they will trick us. And, uh, and, and, and uh, of course, we'll come to an end. That is one of the short-term short strategy, engaging us in negotiation as if they're serious. But we know uh, you read the, the, the psychology of your opponent and you know what they, they want to achieve at the end of the day. But the long-term strategy is actually a military strategy to wipe us out. As we speak to you now, they are attacking our bases. Now, now they are attacking our bases. And uh, of course, when, as you read in my statement, I usually say we have a right to self-defense. Uh, we will, of course, defend our position and we will also fight back if any force come and attack our position. Uh, on regard to issues of displacement, it is the government who is displacing the citizens, particularly in Yei. The government goes to these villages because the first accusation that they laid on these people is that these people are the ones supporting us. So for that matter, uh, they become victim. They go, they loot, they rape, they kill. And at the end of the day, they put all the belongings of these people into the military trucks and bring them to, to Ye and they sell them. Everybody's seeing, everybody's seeing, the NGOs are seeing, universe is seeing, everybody's seeing. Because if, if it is us doing this thing, then why, why don't we take those belongings for civilians? Why should it be going to town by military trucks? So you can see the military we have in South Sudan, uh, part of their mandate is to own the belongings of the citizen after they go and cause their havoc and the like. That is one. Are you saying, are you saying that the report by the UN um, is false? Who is giving this report by the UN? But the UN is relying on the people who is giving them. The UN is, is relying on the people whom they come into contact with them. This is what, uh, what this is what I know. Yeah. So, so the basis of reality depends on how you get the source of your information that, 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 you, that you have. So uh, the second one on, on the issues of gold mining, as I put it in the, in the beginning, we don't have presence in Eastern Equatoria. So if we don't have presence in Eastern Equatoria, then how do you get the gold that these people are talking about? So this, this is, this is uh, something which is of course undisputable is uh, they should have assessed the whole thing and, and come out with, the, with a, a proper analysis of how it is. Even this mining, mining is not an easy thing. Uh, mining of gold is not an easy, is not an easy venture, but in the context of South Sudan, where there are no roads, where there are no equipments, where there are no, you cannot be able to produce something on an industrial level that you can finance a, a, a war uh, which is uh, cost effective. You cannot do that. You see, which is costly. You cannot be able well, to we do know that. that. So this all, mm -hmm. eh? I mean, since in Congo, of course, there's the mining of uh, uh, natural resources that is being used to actually fund the conflict. So it, if you're saying that NASA is not involved in the whole extraction of the gold and other mineral resources, where is your funding coming from to support your uh, initiative? The, 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 the situation in Congo is different. The context of Congo is different from ours. The, the context of Congo, there are, there are multiple uh, companies, oil companies, rather gold mining companies that are already in the country that are helping some of these uh, groups that are mining uh, gold there. And already uh, there are even established factories mm -hmm. on the, where we are getting our, where we are getting our, our resources. Uh, of course, we, we entirely rely on our people. We have membership. And our membership are in thousands and thousands and thousands. This is our, this is our primary source. The second source is the SSPDF. When the SSPDF come and attack our bases, on average, on average, <laughs> 10 guns. You see that? 
This is this is how we are building ourselves. So it is a, the SSPDF who is supplying us with ammunitions. You see that? It is the SSPDF who is supplying us with food. Yeah. So this is this is what is happening. Recently, on uh, April 20th, 2021, General Abraham Wana Yaone sustained fatal injuries after being attacked in Kampala, Uganda which led to his death two days later. General Abraham Wana was the chief of staff for the military wing of the opposition group known as the South Sudan National Movement for Change Army. General Thomas Cirillo called him a fierce fighter, a revolutionary who fought in all the oppressive successive regimes in Khartoum from 1986 to, 90, to the present time. Following the death of General Abraham Wana, the South Sudan Opposition Movement Alliance ended up boycotting the recent talks with the government. What is the stance of the National Salvation Front as it relates to this boycotting? Uh, first of all, uh, we condemn the, the, the assassination of General Abraham. And uh, General Abraham contributed a lot to, to this country, South Sudan. And uh, when we paid him, when people paid him uh, on that fateful day by assassinating him, so you can see how <laughs> South Sudan is really. Uh, so uh, we in us, uh, we condemn that incident. And uh, secondly, we remember his great contribution that he has done uh, uh, to South Sudan. This is a person who introduced SPLM in Equatoria, uh, led the force throughout from Ethiopia to Equatoria and trained several bases uh, of, the S of the SPLM forces that finally brought the war to Yuba, pressurized Yuba. The last operation was uh, in Kasala with General Thomas that pressurized the government to negotiate an uh, agreement that led to the independence of South Sudan. So there is no doubt on his contribution that uh, he has done. This is a person who hates injustice. He doesn't want just injustice at all done to, to himself or to anybody. And that's why he also rejected the policy of uh, self care and his group. Um, the talks are supposed to begin on 8th. Uh, just immediately after the death of uh, Abraham. And this is the chief of staff of the sister member of uh, Soma. Uh, and then we're asking ourselves, uh, how do you negotiate with somebody who still believe in uh, assassinating somebody, some people? How do you, believe, how do you negotiate? And even at that time, uh, he was not even buried. He was not buried when the, 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 the schedule meeting was supposed to take place. So I'm not a member of SOMA uh, in terms of uh, decision making, but I think the leadership of SOMA sat and they, and they resolved that uh, this negotiation is not possible at this moment. Uh, and that's why they, they, they wrote to Senti Gideo that uh, they demand uh, the postponement of the of the negotiation. So this is actually what uh, what happened. Now, the National Salvation Front was among the nine initial opposition groups that formed South Sudan Opposition Alliance. The nine groups included the National Salvation Front, the Federal Democratic Party, South Sudan Armed Forces, National Democratic Movement, People's Democratic Movement. South Sudan's Liberation Movement Army, South Sudan National Movement for Change, South Sudan Patriotic Movement Army, South Sudan United Movement Army, and lastly, United Democratic Republican Alliance. As we conclude this interview, what would you like the viewers to take away from what you have stated about the National Salvation Front? Because there are so many faction groups out there, opposition groups, and they all seem to be fighting towards the same goal, but yet not achieving anything. And also, 
what is the federal form of system that you're advocating for? Can you address that as well? Uh, first of all, uh, National Salvation Front has abbreviated NAS. Uh, we decided to call it NAS uh, people in Arabic, people. Uh, our policies are people centered. Uh, we are not fighting for ourselves as leaders, but we are fighting for the people of South Sudan. So the takeaway in this conversation is I want the people of South Sudan to know that uh, National Salvation Front is striving hard to be a people based. We wanted to inhibit in the hearts and the mind of the people of South Sudan. And in that, uh, the philosophy of uh, helping people of South Sudan wholesomely is what we are looking for. And that's why when we rejected the agreement in Khartoum, which is an elite agreement, which is a gentleman agreement among politicians, we rejected it. We said, no, we wanted an agreement where the interests of the people of South Sudan is put first, not the interests of uh, not the interests of individuals. So this is one of the takeaway from these uh, talks. Two, we know there are many issues. There are many issues that need to be addressed. Peace is a process. Peace is not an end by itself. But you'll always have to put a foundation that will now make you or guide you your steps towards achieving your goal. So we are always saying, if we are to address the problem of South Sudan, we first of all had to address the question of governance in the country. So how do you address the question of governance? Everywhere, everybody is complaining that Juba has concentrated the power. And indeed, Juba has concentrated the power. The states have become useless. And that's why the governors are spending much of their time in the states. Why? Because that's where the power is. So if this is the source of the problem, let us address it through restructuring the governance. And that's the second aspect that we brought in the issue of federal system. Federal system people should not fear it. There are many countries in the world that are stable today, that has reached to the very largest and the highest heights of development because of this federal arrangement. And because in the federal arrangement, there is each element of self-rule and there is element of shared, uh, shared powers. You share power at the same time, in the level of the states, you have self-rule, you self yourself. Because we know in our areas, we have peculiarities. South Sudan is not the same in terms of cultures and beliefs and in terms of practice. So you cannot merge this country together and rule it from center because it will contradict the beliefs and aspiration of other people somewhere. So when you give those people power, when you give them legislative power, you give them economic power, you give them administrative power, then they will be able to manage themselves and you will have actually reduce the burden that always you have in the center. And then the people in the center will always be concentrating on defense, will be concentrating on finance, will be concentrating on foreign policy. But the rest of things like education, health, agriculture, leave the states to do their things. So this is all about federal arrangement that we're talking about. And this is another area that we are highly advocating for. For any genuine peace to happen, particularly in South Sudan, we have to look at the aspect of the security. And that's why the government is insisting on what we call security reforms. But we told them that there is nothing to reform. You reform when there is a group of people to be reformed, who look reformable, who look trainable. But if you have, like this force is called Matanganyor, <laughs> how do you reform Matanganyor? You cannot reform them. But what we need in South Sudan is building a new security sector. That's what we need. A security sector which is well-trained, which is professional, which is disciplined, and with clear mandate of what they're supposed to do. And subject to the civilian authority. There, we can now guarantee a total peace in the South. Why? And this force must be diverse. 
diverse, representing all our diversities in South Sudan. So these are some of the ideas that we in National Salvation Fund were trying to, 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 to put forward. So this is all about us and I look forward for more. Uh, there are still many things that we have. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Suba Samuel Manasse, spokesman for the National Salvation Front for joining me here on Beyond the Headlines. Thank you, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page at Sunrise Media.